Back in 2004 and 2005, I was shooting on a Panasonic DVX100, and many people are familiar with this camera because it was a very popular camera at the time and has had kind of a little bit of a legacy because of how it shook things up in the industry by offering 24 frames a second. After the DVX100, I moved on to the HVX200, and from there, the whole DSLR revolution began, and that's a whole other video. But what some people might not know is that the DVX100 was popular and significant for another reason. It had a hack or a mod for the camera that offered 444 color and higher resolution than the standard def that was recorded internally. If you're familiar with the DVX100, it recorded to mini DV tapes, which to be fair, were cool for their time, but definitely not up to par with the quality of today's imaging. And even at the time, they were subpar compared to the other broadcast cameras that were available. Mini DV was the, the poor man's way of capturing video, essentially. It was cheap, it was consumer friendly, and it worked for what it was. But no one was really happy with Mini DV, and I think we're all happier without it. But what these two guys did with the Andromeda mod was they tapped into the DVX100's analog to digital converters and they took all that data that was going through the camera and being processed and recorded to mini DV. And instead, they outputted that da data over uh, a hardware modification over USB 2.0 so you could get the actual quality video that was being recorded in the camera. Now these guys were two Purdue University students in Indiana, Juan Pertiera and Jeremy Jacobs, and they founded a company called RealStream, and they announced in 2005 that they were going to be doing this Andromeda hack or mod, whatever you want to call it, and they actually did it. They started charging people, at one point it was around 2500 for this hardware modification for your DVX100, and people did it. And you can still find some of these cameras online today. However, a lot of this has disappeared and vanished because shortly after they started doing all this, a company came along and bought them out, and they bought the tech, and they closed up shop. So you can't get, and you couldn't get, the Andromeda modification after this time. They were even working on a modification for the HVX200 called Hydra that never came out. They announced that they were working on it, but it never came out. So what's interesting about all this is a little bit, little bit of history, and it really doesn't matter now. I mean, most of our modern cameras are much better than what you could get with a DVX100, even if it had the Andromeda mod. But it's cool to see what these two guys did in terms of tapping into the actual potential and power of the DVX100 compared to what Panasonic was giving people at the time. You know, something that could do 444 color and close to 1080p. It was actually 1546 by 990, so HD ish resolution. That's what the DVX100 could do, but it was all being thrown away and discarded for the sake of recording to mini DV which is what we're seeing a lot with it. now with our modern cameras where you have these cameras with sensors that are capable of recording thousands of frames per second at a really high quality and they throw all that away to fit in a codec whether it's H.264 or they need to record to SD cards or whatever it might be and it takes more processing power to do that on the fly in the camera but they were able to bypass this back in 2005 by just dumping all that raw data very similar uh, I'm sure not the exact same. I'm not an engineer, so I don't know how it works behind the scenes, but very similar to what they're doing with the uh, Magic Lantern hack for the 5D Mark II and Mark III, where they're taking that raw data and just storing it and processing it all later. So it is interesting to see that these cameras that we have are capable of so much more, but to be edit friendly, to be consumer friendly, whatever it is, they limit them or they, you know, <laughs> give it a little bit of a crutch by having to work within the confines of a 420 codec or recording to SD cards or whatever because the in, you know the internal components it's very difficult to put those fast processors into the camera but wouldn't it be nice if a company gave you this that raw data as an option if you wanted it so that you could process it later to get the actual best quality out of the camera it's interesting that Jeremy Jacobs and Juan Pertiera, 
who founded Real Stream Andromeda, had this idea way back in 2005. And we're doing this on a DVX100, a camera that was popular all on its own. And they were just like, let's make this better. And yet, it's all just kind of vanished and all just gone away. Even if when you search around online, it's very difficult to find anything more than the surface level information. There, are, I certainly wasn't involved in this community at the time. I was much younger and wasn't aware that all this stuff was happening. But it is kind of a fun, cool little story to look back on history and think of, you know, like what could have have been if they hadn't been bought out or didn't sell and had kept doing this and pushing things in this direction the do-it-yourself hardware modification community and what kind of stuff would we have today now there's still communities doing this stuff i i bought the panasonic gh1 because of the hack that actually opened up that camera's potential and gave you 24 frames a second and better bit rates and actual proper you know recording compared to what came stock on the gh1 but that alone woke Panasonic up to what they had and now then they made the GH2 and the GH3 and now the GH4. So I love to see these community efforts from people pushing these cameras to their limit, to the breaking point, and even beyond it in some cases. You know, this isn't like, oh, just do it for fun and see what happens because you could mess something up. But Magic Lantern, uh, Vitaly, what he did with the GH1 and these guys back in 2005 with Real Stream Andromeda, it's really, really cool, and I'd love to see more of it. So hopefully that was a, a fun little history lesson, kind of a cool forgotten story for the ages. It, like I said, it doesn't really matter because the DVX100 is so ancient now that even with Andromeda, like what, what are you really going to do? This, you're limited by the sensor size and the, the technology of that age. But we shouldn't forget what happened back then because it'd be nice to see similar efforts going forward in today's world.